special thanks to my Patreon patrons, Noble Tier and Larking Tier. Hey guys, it's Michael and I'm back for another reaction video. We're back with some more Windigoon. Uh, we're continuing the Conspiracy Theory Iceberg. We're in Tier 8, which so far, there's only two more tiers after this. I might do two parts today, then it'll be a lot closer for these last few. <laughs> But, uh, I don't know. We'll see how I feel at the end of this part. So, uh, let's get straight into it. Human immortality, as it's referred to on the iceberg, is tied to something known as the induced amnesia theory. Essentially, what it's saying is that the body itself does deteriorate and eventually die, but the human consciousness lasts forever. Or, in other words, it's essentially forms as a sort of essence. And it's been the jobs of secret societies throughout history as a means of placing them in their new host. So basically, the soul isn't necessarily a soul that passes on to the afterlife after death, and is instead physically given to whatever the next body is going to be. And furthermore, information of this getting out to the public has led to theories throughout history, such as reincarnation. So in other words, humans are immortal, but the body itself is not. Elite controls the population with their permission has to do with an overarching idea of the New World Order. Basically, the higher-ups develop ways in order to thin out populations, whether it be disease every hundred years or wars over points that they don't actually care about. So in other words, if two governments come to the agreement that they need to thin out the herd, one will pose a fake threat to the other so that way they can go to war and lower their population numbers. This also applies further into saying that pushes in the hmm. media for people to have less children are part of a- Man, America must be all over that then. Jesus. Greater conspiracy and the fabrications of resource scarcity are just that, fabrications. And if you'll remember earlier in the iceberg, I mentioned the Georgia Guidestones, which if I believe right, it said population needs to be kept to 500 million. This would be the way of getting to that. Bugsy on this iceberg is referring to the movie Bugsy, which is a movie about the gangster known as Bugsy Siegel. Bugsy Siegel was oh, a yeah, yeah. who was killed by the mob. Las Vegas, right? He was supposedly stealing money and incorrectly managing funds. Bugsy renovated and began the Flamingo Casino in Las Vegas, which at the time was pretty much just a water hole in the middle of the desert. And many believe Bugsy as being the one who made Las Vegas what it currently is. However, it's with these funds that he got from East Coast Mafia groups in order to start and renovate the Flamingo Hotel that he started to scrape money off the top, which of course they didn't like. So then he was murdered and went down his history as being a bad guy who started one of the most famous cities in America. The theory is that the movie Bugsy, which portrays him as a sort of charismatic gangster archetype in movies, was created in order to take prejudice away from the ideas of Sin City itself. Or in other words, mm. Las Vegas, which is known as the City of Sin and has gambling and all that stuff, didn't want their image tied in with an evil gangster. So they made a propaganda piece so people felt better about the city itself. Time Cube was a website developed by Gene Ray in 1997. And to be honest with you guys, Gene is an absolute crackpot. Basically, oh, okay. the gist of what he said is that time itself does not work in a linear line and is instead four sides that we travel through. Because of this, every single day, 96 hours actually occur, but we only experience 24, whereas the other hours are experienced in those respective timelines. So basically, you could think of this as string theory or alternate realities, only instead of like infinite, it's just four. It goes on to say that at midday and midnight, the sun and moon of each of these realities are perfectly in sync with each other and people cross over into other ones without realizing it. So basically explanations to the Mandela effect and stuff like that are due to people accidentally crossing over whenever all four planes line up. I also have to mention because I can't not mention this. He said that standing at each of the corners as guardians were Jesus, Einstein, Socrates, and Bill Clinton. <laughs> Bro, what? Kids. If you ever experience the Mandela effect and think you may have gone into an alternate reality, blame Bill Clinton. Technocracy theory is something in itself that's kind of theorized, the idea that the world itself is run by technology. However, this is specifically saying I mean, that the yeah. AI system runs everything. The idea being that over the years, hmm. as we've become more reliant on technology, 
the higher ups or elitists have built machines in order to tell us what to do. This all has to do with the illusion of choice. So say an election, for example, you may vote expecting the candidate to get it, whereas the AI has already predicted the best turn of events and decided what's going to happen. The idea behind it being that free will throughout time has been replaced with comfort and that now in these final stages of a technocracy that we have built for ourselves, the AI makes every decision, but we've given away so much free will at this point, we can't even tell. Wetico is a Native American legend that Whoa. has to do with the spirit of greed and selfishness. The basic idea behind this is that it is a virus that can infect people if people allow it to, that makes someone become more self-desired and individualistic instead of caring for a community. The root word of Wetico is the same root word for Wendigo, whereas the Wendigo oh. has to do with someone becoming cannibalistic and the desire of gluttony that overtakes them. Wetico is essentially the same thing applied to greed and pride, which Wendigo, I definitely haven't heard of that ever. What this is saying in the grander sense is perhaps this disease of the Wetico has affect entire countries or potentially the world at this point as over the last hundred years society has gone from the idea of forward progression as a whole and instead looks at progression of the self so basically a soul virus has made us all bad people which isn't the weirdest on this iceberg all right so yeah. i've got to be careful with this one not because it's any like oh no the government's gonna come shoot me for it but this is like a real group of people and I'm pretty sure I know what this conspiracy is hinting at, but at the same time, it's not like proven anywhere and I don't want to, you know, just be mean. Off the coast oh, okay. of North Carolina, there is a group known as the Bald Head Association. And to answer your first question, no, they're not actually bald. Oh. It's because they are on an island known as Bald Head Island. So these oh, okay. guys have a website, they have a homeowners association, everything's fine until you start to look at some of the things surrounding the bald head association like for example reading about them in the news there was some controversy where after a hurricane the members of the association managed to sort of apply resources to their community instead of communities around which from what light research i've done into that topic it seems people weren't that happy about as well as there was some investigation to a private ferry company and an idea of a lot of money going somewhere and a current charge pending that they kept a federal agent from performing their duties whatever that implies and this is all speculation and i'm like researching this stuff with the point of view of some deep dark scary thing so i don't want to go any further because it's one thing to talk about you know weird crazy lizard people in the ancient world and it's another thing to point at a modern group of people and just be like haha you do crime because there's really no evidence of that and i don't want to be mean like everything on the surface seems like they're sweet people and i feel bad for a youtube channel just looking at their stuff and being like i can make a problem here <laughs> water is not from earth it has to do with the concept of the creation of water itself for one water itself is a volatile compound and while you may not think it it itself is naturally acidic and can do things like erode rocks over time. And while now on Earth with the water cycle where water is evaporated and then reformed over and over, there doesn't seem to be a sort of jumpstart process that would have put that into place. So theories range from everything that perhaps a meteor hit the Earth that either had oxygen or hydrogen with it that then interacted with the atmosphere and created the first batch of water or that water itself as a whole came to the planet from an outside source i feel like which, this one's if possible it was true that water sure. came from somewhere else then that would imply the chance of existence of life somewhere else basically the idea that water was deposited here rather than being created here runescape conspiracies is specifically referring to the most famous runescape conspiracy around new york city the idea being that runescape itself exists as a new york city virtual counterpart evidence of this is everything from the game consists of large different ethnicities that come from separate boroughs that all interact within the same main space there's forms oh, okay of begging, I get what they're saying different ways to make money and the richest most often are those who play the stock market people inherently can't be trusted and there is a selfishness when it comes to greed and how to obtain money within the game which 
is kind of mean to New Yorkers, but whatever. There are events and I mean, that's just that events. occur in which people gather and celebrate before going back to their domain. And there's even an underground transport system throughout the entire map. So the theory states that perhaps Rudescape was put together as a means of testing a sort of feudal post-apocalypse New York City. And it goes even further and says that perhaps Runescape was created by the government as a way to monitor either transaction as it corresponds to the real world or potential transaction if New York City was to fall apart. So if you've ever played RuneScape, I guess you work for the Fed, so congratulations. The Concrete People of Kalagasi has to do with a mine located in Chile. In 2013, roughly 35 people witnessed what they all claimed to be a UFO flying over the mine itself. It stayed there for a few minutes and fit the typical description of a sort of flying saucer. However, while the flying saucer was above them, people looked around them and saw several what appeared to be concrete people standing in their midst. They were all gray, made of stone, and were all sharing their same position looking up at the flying saucer. As people began to panic, the flying saucer left, and with it, the concrete people just disappeared. Theories on this have ranged from hmm. everything to ancient religion. This one's super interesting. Like, I don't think I've ever heard anything like this. Concrete people. With it, the concrete people just disappeared. Theories on this have ranged from everything to ancient religions, to perhaps these are expressed forms of the extraterrestrials himself, and of course to it being just a hoax which is always so lame i hate whenever you're reading these and they're just like yep yeah, it's probably fake it's like do you ever get out of the house codification is one of those that makes me absolutely hate this iceberg because it's just one word and good luck figuring out the conspiracy around it because codification is a real thing that happens in politics so i can only assume it means that but with the rest of this iceberg, I feel like there should be some giant multi-level code that creates humans or something, but no, it just has to do with, like, county politics. Basically, codification is a term that is applied to whenever governments move counties or demographics of people in order to fit new voting codes. Basically, if they look at districts in a state when it comes to voting, and they see that one population greatly outweighs the other. So is this the filibuster the kind of thing? Lines are in order to. I'm not super up on like politics, so I don't know for sure. Better fit the demographics. This form of sort of moving the goalpost has led many to think that perhaps as a means of keeping the people from actually having a say in what happens to them, whenever people begin to band together in order to make a difference, the state itself will just change the rules so that it doesn't really matter. So this is an elaborate hmm. way of them to maintain the agenda that they want and simply give the people an illusion of choice. Inverted humans is in reference to ancient artwork that depicts exactly that, upside down people. In other words, across a lot of old world drawings, there is a consistent theme of a group of normal people, you know, standing upright, surrounding someone in the air upside down. Now, while many just interpret this as a form of art, others have pointed out the weirdness that I don't know, that's a little weird. A of cultures in the similar way. And in some of these that have descriptions attached, such as in the Middle East where there's images of it, there's references to them going from soil to sky. So being upside down and from the ground to sky that sounds like hollow earth to me and you know normally these inverted people are you know like taller than the people on the grounds so, you know tall underground that that sounds to me like italian languages is in reference to the really weird fact that people who speak the italian language over time have a change in their dna now this isn't enough what that, like, a human can transform their physiology from just speaking italian but it is enough that through DNA testing, there is a different scene before and after someone moves to Italy. And while the specific experiments and the greatest results have been seen from the Italian language, this has been found in certain instances around other languages too. This goes back to the idea that languages themselves have a sacred meaning and that some languages have the power to induce life in different forms. This is a big reason that ancient spells and things like that are said to be done in Latin or other old languages because the language itself has a hidden biological power. So in other words, words spoken in certain language can induce a literal soulful or life energy 
that another language could not. Saint Alvin's Creations is huh. in reference to the video game developer Saint, and specifically his most popular creation of Schnell Online. You can find footage of Schnell itself on YouTube, but it's a sort of weird multiplayer game. Several have compared it to Second Life in the way that it's a bunch of characters together just sort of interacting with each other. However, there's a lot of weird themes in it that have to do with things like physical violence and even terrorism. And while I myself have not played the game or watched a ton of gameplay on it, people online have said that there's even themes that have to do with people doing things to, you know, like, Kids. So people have said perhaps oh. this game exists as a means of a outlet for terrorists and these people who do not nice things to kids. On top of that, there's a credit trading system in the game, which people will convert into real money in the real world. So there's even an idea that money laundering occurs through it, through these illegal transactions. Oh. Or I should say transactions for illegal goods that are hidden through this game. Now, this is all, of course, like tier eight conspiracy. Do not actually harass the creator of this game. This is all like through the grapevine. I'm sure that's not actually what it's for, but be nice. But yeah, that's the theory. 90% of books written by one author isn't saying that there's some guy who's existed for like 800 years who's just been hurriedly writing books, although at this point, why not? But this ties back into the simulation theory. Put it this way, right? You've been in a bookstore. So you've mm -hmm. seen like the near infinite amount of paperbacks that have totally unrecognizable titles that are just mm -hmm. sitting on the shelves. Well, several yep. of those books are fill-ins that are made in order to enhance the simulation and make things feel more real. And realistically, there's no way you could ever be able to test all of them. Like, go ahead, try. You try to read through every book in your local bookstore and then another one. There's eventually gonna be pages somewhere that you aren't getting to and that those are just filler because according to this whatever you do look at the simulation prepared for and put real words there so try not to let that bug you cca xx1 hmm. is in reference to the launching of the zuma satellite basically the zuma satellite was a satellite that was launched by spacex however the details around it are really shady like, for example, the creators of the Zuma satellite never wanted themselves to be known and even loaded the rocket themselves. And supposedly CCAXX1 is the code that was given to whatever was on board. Theories say that perhaps whatever's on board is a form of biological testing, more specifically testing on amoebas in order to create a sort of super amoeba. And again, at this point in the research, it's really hard to find direct lines connecting things, but a lot of people tie the Zuma satellite into the concept of brain-eating amoebas, which when you think about it, brain-eating amoebas are like really weird that they exist. Like the fact yeah. there's like trillions and quadrillions of amoebas everywhere that at any point don't cause any harm except a few that just eat your brain. So this is saying that perhaps those amoebas are genetically engineered and the Zuma satellite is either a means of maintaining them or to enhance them somehow away from Earth. Holy Grail found centuries ago hmm. is in reference to the Holy Grail and the idea that perhaps elitist rings have been using its power for a long time. Historically, the Holy Grail is the chalice that Jesus drank from at the Last Supper. And the idea mm -hmm. around it is that if anyone drinks from the Holy Grail, they'll have eternal life, knowledge, and a whole slew of other abilities. The idea being that historical figures have been drinking and getting the power of the Holy Grail for hundreds of years, and the reason that secret societies are able to be maintained for so long and continue so efficiently despite this really a cool. rotating list of members is because the highest up members have been eternal and they're from the start. Bovine hormone conditioning has to do with another level of population control. So you know how you hear that in recent years all of the hormones injected into cows is making people sick? Well the main explanation that you hear from that is that growth hormones are put in them in order to make them grow faster so that way they can put out more meat. However this theory is saying perhaps dangerous toxins are purposefully deposited in these bovines because for one, it would go undetected and two, it's a good means of curbing the population. Because at that point, trying to get anyone for making the cows have bad chemicals in them is the equivalent of pointing your finger at the boogeyman. This is similar to the soy theories I mentioned before with the idea that the government is 
doing all of this stuff to the food that we eat as a means of changing our physiology only whereas soy was making men weak this is making cows kill you xra psyops has to do with the adult swim cartoon xavier the renegade angel the idea behind it is that the show itself was created as a means of anti-religion not only that but that the show itself proliferates ideas such as degeneracy and kid stuff and that specific degeneracy combined with a lot of themes of blood rituals and stuff like that is a means of normalizing the population at large with things like the Epstein rituals. <laughs> so in other words, these elitists who kidnap children and perform blood spells created a show on Adult Swim so that whenever it's brought to light, you'll be like, hey, it's just like that cartoon. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know about that. Now, but the way we're heading, I wouldn't be surprised at all if whenever all that stuff comes to light, people are just like, oh, okay. Bug chasing is a real thing um, that is awful. So bug chasing is a thing that happens in online crowds where people want to both contract and give stds to as many unknowing people as possible this is what's oh. things like hiv which they refer to as the gift and several people in these online communities take on roles as the hunters and prey with some people even trying to collect as many stds as possible within their body while a lot of it is consensual or basically they want to have the disease put into them mm -mm. several are serial killers in everything but name and just try to give it to as many people as possible which is absolutely evil and disgusting and horrible and i read stuff like that and then i think back to like the epstein people making a tv show in order to make themselves more okay and i'm like all right, I could see it. Hostile plants has two branching theories off of it. One being the idea that hostile plants themselves are a sort of genetic experimentation, or at least are behind the scenes being genetically experimented on. Like for example, take bananas and watermelons and other plants that over time we've genetically engineered to be bigger to suit our needs. So for example, if there's some like umbrella corporation kind of company out there who sees the Venus flytrap and is like, I bet we can make that thing eat people, which would make a form of self-sustaining security. The other idea is that the existence of hostile plants, or in other words, plants that have adapted in order to be aggressive in their environment, implies that at one point they were potentially competitors with life as we know it. Like the whole idea in evolution that things evolve certain characteristics in order to be more fierce. Well, this is saying that because plants did that, there's potential that if it wasn't for people or life that they would keep doing that and then eventually it'd be giant plant monsters everywhere. Upward causality is cause and effect as we understand it, only backwards. So for example, in an ecosystem, let's say you have- Cause and effect, but only backwards. So the effect, okay I, water okay, I that comes it. down from the sky so then that water adds water itself to the ground plants take in that water plants feed the animals animals feed the other animals etc that's the principle of how the world itself works in something called downward causality or in other words things start at the top and as they continue through the flow of the ecosystem things change upward causality is the other way around so the animal that needs to eat another animal makes that other animal have the desire to eat food which makes the food have the desire to take in water which makes the sky produce more water while this is a real backward thought of how things work it does tie in well to things like simulation theory so for example you as the person need to intake food so mm -hmm. the system itself puts more food into it which means it has to supply water for the food and blah 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 what it basically comes down to is the idea that the most affected in a society are actually creating the effect itself so rather than being beings that inhabit a biosphere you yourself are the creator that changes the biosphere around you it's really like confusing and out there and weird ideas but this is tier eight, what did you expect? Lithuanian poems has to do with Lithuanian poems that were discovered in the early 1900s that seemed to correctly predict events that would happen in the future. Specifically, oh. several of these poems from Europe 
correctly described things like the Holocaust and the World Wars 20 to 30 years before they ever came to be. With some records saying that these poems actually originated in the 1800s, so tack on another 100 years to that. What's interesting is that several of these influences of Lithuania come from Sanskrit text, which if you'll remember I talked about earlier in the iceberg, Sanskrit text itself is interesting because they had all the predictions of what comes in the future as well as aliens. So through the whole grapevine, we can see that perhaps this alien influenced society influenced another society that was able to correctly predict things that would happen a century in advance. So basically aliens tell group of people who tell another group of people and then they predict World War II, which at this point makes perfect sense. Aliens cause the bubonic. Oh my God, the next one. Okay, I think I, I think I will do this next one, even though I think it's a bit longer. But uh, sorry, I'm not talking much. I'm trying to in get all of this information in, and I don't really have much comment on it because I'm like, it's so out there most of it. But uh, let's let's get in the next part. Aliens cause the bubonic plague plague is the theory that aliens cause the bubonic plague. The bubonic plague, also known as just the plague or the Black Death, Black Death, is a disease that swept through mostly Europe but the rest of the world in the 14th century. It's estimated mm -hmm. to have killed 25 million people or a third of the world's population. There were several prevailing theories at the time that mostly came from the church that the bubonic plague was either God's punishment for the immorality of the people or that it was a curse brought on to them by the devil or witches. And that witch thing is interesting because there's several theories that things relating to astrology and spells and sorcery are the relation of extraterrestrial beings. So combining some of the ideas we've talked about in the iceberg up until now, you take ideas that aliens create magic or that aliens are just beings in a plane that we can't see. So if you think the bubonic plague was called by sorcery, then that sorcery may not have been of Earth. And the motivations for this could be population control, an attempt at total extermination, who knows. Enchanted Websites is related to the idea that there is a sort of fake success that is bestowed on some people through the use of magic. While there's a joke somewhere in here about how to fix the algorithm, you pretty much have to get lucky or use black magic to get there. The idea is that certain famous people came to the power that they have through the use of these magical enchantments. In research for this, I came across a website called Enchanted Websites that is really, really old and was advertising that they can make you famous by just giving them your website. They kept talking about all their clientele who went on to great success and saying that they can bestow their special capabilities onto whatever you're already using and then you'll get popular. Of course, I tried to see if I could get some magical whatever advice, but all the websites and links were dead, so mm -hmm. sad. But it all relates back to that greater theory that some of the success we see in the world of whatever's popular is artificial. Sun collapse is related to the concept of solar farming. Solar farming is exactly what it says, the fact that us as humans continuously farm the energy that's expelled by the sun. The basic mm -hmm. idea with this is, is that we're farming it too much. In other words, through using its heat or its light in order to grow agriculture or just solar panels, we are taking away from the equilibrium that once existed. And it all goes back to the whole idea of like energy conservation. And essentially, while the sun's believed to be a burning star, this is saying that the net value of heat that it expels has to be kept at a sort of even level and that we're throwing that too much in the balance will eventually make the sun run out of energy and therefore collapse and then we all die so i mean it's going to neat. anyways Chase found in fossils eventually not a joke and there have been fossils that have been opened up and things found that were initially said to be microchips now in every single one of these stories what? the details of it have been walked back afterwards for example a t-rex bone that had a microchip found in it they later said was a fossil of some ancient bacteria another one they said was just a bone fragment that looked a whole lot like a microchip and kind of related i remember in research reading about stories for previous sections about fuses being found in ancient pots. So for example, they open up this completely undisturbed grave, they're going through all of the pots in there, and then they find what appears to be modern day fuses. This all relates back to a concept called the Great Reset, 
which I don't know how much in detail I want to get about it now because I'm pretty sure like the Great Reset itself is mentioned later on. But short version for now, the Great Reset says that yeah, I've heard we of this. constantly exist on a cycle. We go from the first remnants of humanity to a point where we destroy everything, and then thousands or millions. This of one years makes later, sense. The whole cycle like repeats itself. The whole great, rest, great reset thing. Like why the Earth, despite being hundreds of million years old, humanity only has history around ten thousand. The idea being, we'll all get wiped out. There will be a reset, and then those people that come, however many million years from now will find remnants of our existence and then gather them. The reason that T-Rexes had microchips on them and the reason people used to put fuses in jars. That's your basic intro. Um, I'm sure it'll come up later. If not, I'll do a video on about it. Whatever, next topic. The Black Snake Prophecy relates to a legend of the Lakota tribe. Essentially, the Native American tribe of the Lakota had this legend that near the end times, a great black snake would come across the land and destroy everything. The legend says that it will desecrate ritual sites, that it will destroy villages, and that it will come from the ground and then return back to the ground. As many modern Lakota <laughs> members have pointed out, this is a perfect example of the ideas of oil pipelines, roadways, and other modern industry. The idea being the idea of a great black snake coming and destroying the ritual sites of the Lakota, and now a giant oil pipeline is trying to do the same thing is alarming. But politics aside, this has a greater expanding idea when it comes to prophecy. Things that most people would brush off as being not true, if you can view the black snake as being the modern fulfillment of an old prophecy, then what other old prophecies could also be true? Things I mentioned like the Wetico, a disease that essentially consumes someone with greed, could be the idea of modern corporatism. You could take it on and on and on and say maybe some of those crazy spiritual beliefs weren't so crazy after all. Underground caverns. Oh boy. So Here we every go. time another horror Hello. theory thing comes up, I mention sort of a different facet of it. And one day I'm going to do a video putting it all together, but there's a few I want to go over with this one. For example, the Tibetan holy books said that beneath Mount Everest specifically, there were these tunnel systems that went all over the world. Now, if you know anything about cave systems, the majority of them are completely unexplored. Near a cave system that I live by that's a popular tourist attraction, they've tried to drop trackers into riverways to see where they end up, and they will totally disappear forever <laughs> and also the majority of underground systems are closed up by the government and in most cases it is a felony if you destroy or try to get access to them this leans back into the thing i've kind of hinted at in a lot of theories that the entire world has these underground systems that work towards the bigger concept of hollow earth and think about it every single group of people have some form of legend of creatures living underground either it be old chinese tales of frogmen that come from underneath caves or old night stories of these troglodyte creatures that they would fight on their expeditions even religions with the common idea that demons live underneath or the idea that you can dig your way down into hell that combined with the fact that it's believed underneath the pyramids is a massive underground cave system or the idea that these random structures on antarctica were constructed a long time ago as a signal to get underground for some reason and other ancient societies who had a distinct interest with caves and some of them disappearing all together at once it makes you wonder. Biblical aliens is basically hmm. the idea that several things that are mentioned in the Bible as rather innocuous concepts are actually about extraterrestrials. Put it this way, there's a ton of mentioning in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, that people will worship the stars and the things in them. Well, if you think about other concepts we've talked about of UFOs and the fact that they've been here for however many thousand years, then it puts together the idea that these people may not just be worshipping the constellations. And some take this to mean several mentions in the Bible of either angels or these great sightings appearing before people are actually aliens being described by prophets. Some go as far as to say biblically accurate angels are actually just what extraterrestrials look like, which is a terrifying concept. Air's poison isn't necessarily saying air is going to kill you, even though technically it kind of does, but that's besides the yeah, point. Pollution. More so, it's saying that air is a drug. For one, oxygen itself is a sort of like hallucinogenic, and if you take 100% oxygen at once, you can pass out or get very lightheaded. The idea being all the trace particles that we breathe in every day from the point that we're born till now create a sort of blurred idea of what reality really is. So, that asks the question, 
if air causes these sort of long-term psycho events then what does reality really look like and has anyone really seen it this could also explain why things like the supernatural and spirits aren't visible to us because maybe there's a sort of fog in the way of our viewing the luna park train fire demon which is one heck of an entry title. On June 9th of 1979, the Luna Park Amusement Park had a ride known as the Ghost Train that caught on fire and ended up killing seven people. The story itself okay. is really tragic. Basically, people who were on the ride were killed while within the ride from- That's why I don't get on the rides anymore. Fire. And an investigation I don't mess with that stuff anymore ruled that the fire was caused by an arson on purpose although the perpetrator was never caught then one day while a woman who lost her son and her husband to the fire was going through pictures of the park that day she came across this image bro that's scary what the heck now other than being absolutely terrifying the person in the costume is especially alarming as no one was able to find him after the event there was never a record of them hiring or having a costume like that because duh why would a park make that a mascot for kids and from all points and records this guy did not work at the park and was just a bystander so for one it's really creepy that that guy was there on the day of the fire and two it's doubly creepy that presumably the dad or someone took a picture with their kid next to him. What some have pointed out that's especially creepy about this is that the costume bears a striking resemblance to Moloch. Moloch is one of the gods of the Canaanites mentioned in the Old Testament of the Bible. Essentially, Moloch is always depicted as the golden bull with horns that the primary form of worship was to burn children at the altar of it, which Whoa. led to these horrifying statues of golden bulls with fires underneath them and people just throwing babies into it. Because gotta love that Old Testament stuff. <laughs> now, it's not a secret that several demon or demon-like gods are worshipped in the modern sense, although we don't really hear a lot about what they do. Whereas here, we see someone dressed as Moloch at a park on the day that the child he's taking a picture with was burned alive and you see where i'm going with this the idea is perhaps this guy sounds a crazy form of worship to this god burned the children alive as several other children died in the train fire this opens up the idea that some of these evil practices may still be occurring in the modern world neanderthal superiority is the idea that the main competitor with homo sapien neanderthal was actually the superior race basically people who study like the evolution of humanity say that neanderthal who was our main competitor who was possibly interbred with to create us it's confusing from the records of their technological capabilities were actually the stronger people however yet they still seem to lose and i mean lose in like the evolutionary sense i mean it's not like there was a tug of war game over although there might have been that would have been cool um anyway now where they went a lot of people say is just from a lack of resources and they died out although there's a lot cooler theories later in the list but for now i want to mention the one throwaway one that i appreciate is that they eventually evolved into bigfoot um which is going to be the leading theory from now so like from this video a bigfoot is neanderthal although i'm going to retcon that one later but that's canon as of this moment. UFOs are atmospheric life forms is actually an idea that was originally brought forward by Robert Fork, a guy I mentioned way back in the iceberg, the Fordian ideas of the supernatural. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was his doing. Basically, the idea of these energy beings or beings from a separate dimension is that UFOs aren't carriers from aliens from our plane of existence. Instead, there's other planes of existence and they're crossing over, and that's either what they look like or what our brains and like stupid human eyes process them as. Keep in mind, when UFOs were originally spotted, they were described as sky beasts, so that would match up. There's a ton of theories when you go into this from everything that it is an extraterrestrial, but it's simply sort of camouflaging itself to our eyes, to some even saying they are souls in the afterlife, just visible to the human conscious. Conscious, consciousness, con consciousness. Whatever. I don't know what's more terrifying, the idea that there's like a hundred living things on side of that ship, 
or the giant ship itself is a living thing. Actually, now that I say it out loud, yeah, that's the living thing. more terrifying. Yeah. Expanding Earth is the idea that over time, the Earth is slowly getting bigger. In the modern sense, we can see that with things on the seafloor seemingly being relocated over the course of 100 years. And, you know, when it comes to conservation of mass, if there were things in our atmosphere that are now being harvested and turned into things on Earth, then that is slowly compiling to the overall size of it. This is even used as an explanation for mm. continental drift and the idea of Pangea. The idea that they didn't break away and then float, they were sort of pushed apart as the earth got bigger. And ideas such as global warming could this be one quite literal. This really cool. we're getting bigger, we're technically getting closer to the sun. Or, you know, there's the alternative theory that it's not because stuff's getting, you know, put on the earth. It's that the earth is expanding from the inside out, which would probably mean that the inside was, I don't know, hollow. <laughs> <laughs> forest stairs is a concept i absolutely love and even did an entire video on which will be linked in the description but short version the forest stairs are these random staircases that seem to be found in remote parts of the forest most stories around them relate to the idea of someone going up to them and either hearing or seeing some sort of spatial anomaly with some cases that happen whenever someone goes to them alone where they either get mutilated or just die. The leading idea with this is that the stairs are sort of leak overs from other dimension, and directly interacting with them is kind of like staring at a glitch in a video game. Whenever you do it, you are therefore inserting yourself into the problem which makes sort of the spatial anomalies interact with you. Everything happens to people who walk on the stairs or touch the railings from they begin to lose all their hearing and start to hear noises that aren't there to some where they just get eviscerated all at once, which is fun. Either way, the forest stairs exist in that perfect space of sort of neutral anomalies that exist in the mountains and the wilderness. And I, for one, absolutely love it. Nephilim crazy. protocols. So Nephilim, uh, if you didn't watch my Bible iceberg, is in relation to the concept of... However, the Nephilim protocols aren't specifically about that. Essentially, there are these hidden files that exist on the deep web, which is a fancy way of saying a Tor browser, yada yada, that over time seem to be collecting data for an unknown reason. All of these files are encrypted, but they're each given a specific encryption key that if a certain event takes place, they will become open. Now, there's a lot of like rabbit holes oh. to shoot down with this, but the short version is that anytime some public scandal comes out, they seem to compile more data. The idea is that these servers, named after giants for a pretty good reason, are compiling a ton of data about elites or secret sort of Watergate style events that happen around the world. And then for a reason that no one knows, they will become open and shed light on what the elites are doing. No one knows who's doing it. No one knows what opens them, but ideas range from everything that it is certain high up elitist members who are sort of staging an anti-coup to it being the Illuminati, to some saying that it's quite literally giants himself, which is my favorite theory and the one I'm going with. I just imagine like a giant like underground in a cave, like wearing the Morpheus outfit from the Matrix with the glasses, like on a giant keyboard, gathering information about Epstein and it just makes me happy. Atomic renovation is one of two theories. I think it's the latter, but I'll say both. The first one is the idea that the stereotypical American 50s, whenever people had the idea of the atomic family, was part of a docility program, essentially get people to accept this one way of living, so that way they don't think about the government around them or the concepts, which while there's a case to be made for that, I think it's actually referring to the second idea. The second idea is that atomic weapons were developed by governments as a means of immediately reclaiming a populace. Basically think of it like this, if the evil lizard government gets together and decides that they can nuke a certain country because the people aren't doing well, then they can just nuke it and then they can wait 30 years and then they can go in and just reset it. So essentially you renovate whatever group of people you don't like if they're too insubordinate or whatever and atomic weapons are essentially a giant reset button. So they weren't developed as an arm race or to better defend a country as we're led to believe, basically as a giant system of population control. Since this programming has to do with your individual experience as a human on earth. Basically it's like this, you've heard concepts that your red is not my red, 
and mm-hmm. that everyone smells different smells a certain way or everyone tastes things a different way and all of those senses have slowly been programmed into you over time the interesting thing is we don't really know what does that programming sure people can see different shades of colors differently but it's believed that that is a learned trait rather than a born one. So there are these hidden factors that exist around us that cause us to experience reality in the precise way that we experience it, creating a 100% unique humanity from every person to person. Paradigm. I don't think I've ever thought of that, but that that is interesting. Hmm. Recalescence is a sort of expanding idea when it comes to technology of eventually getting to a point above consciousness. Think of it as like having an out of body experience that you can control and interact with other minds. The idea behind it is that we're really, really kind of like lucid dreaming. Think of everything technology can accomplish when it comes to medicine and psychology and think if we can find a way to get consciousness out of the human body for a limited amount of time. A theory going a bit deeper than that, so there is this thing I've seen floating around whenever I talk about these sort of technological concepts on the iceberg called the Mariana Web. Essentially, it's supposed to be a very deep down part of the internet that is purely data. It's supposed to be the hard files on how to make the Broder's engine that I talked about, it has all the schematics to build a GGG QEP, which is the supercomputer I talked about, and the paradigm recalescence as well. The idea is these are technological things that will push humanity to the next level. And even though we know how to do it, the elites or the powers that be are hiding them from us because either we're not ready or they don't want us to have that power. So essentially somewhere there exists a super internet where we can make the next step in the technological hey, revolution. It was a supercomputer super please beings that can project our body and have infinite energy and these forever computers and whatever um so if anyone can find it i'll give you five dollars neolithic's contraption is closely related to the whole microchips found in dinosaur bones basically looking at neolithic devices or other ancient groups of people and the designs that they built there's some interesting crossovers. For example, concepts like the aqueduct and even things like wind turbine engines had these sort of basic forms that were created in ancient society that we seem to forget about for a thousand years and then reinvent later. So think about this. You have us now who is making technology and then imagine that there was something like, I don't know, a great reset where all of humanity starts over. So then it continues on that pipeline and then they begin to forget why they know some things and then they're rediscovered. Essentially saying ancient world technologies that seem quite advanced for their time are because of memories or remnants from technologies that existed in the previous generation of people. And I don't mean generation as in like their parents, I mean generation like the next cycle back. So these contraptions that were built thousands and thousands of years ago are due to contraptions that were built millions and millions of years ago. Eratus is something that if you're on this side of YouTube, I'm sure you've heard of before. Now nope. there's an excellent video by Nexpo that I'm gonna link in the description. He covers this in way better detail than I can go into right now, but the short version's this. Basically someone discovered that at UPS there was a word called Eratus that they weren't supposed to ask about and anyone who asked about it got fired. And after doing what? some digging, the original poster figured out that this exists across several companies and Eratus is essentially this program that compiles information about millions and millions of people and then throws it into assumedly a government database. Of course, this is super illegal, but the idea behind it is that it is a means of general population control by knowing everything about what everyone's doing, etc. Where the creepy part comes in is that anyone who talks about Eratus online either gets shut down or silenced in some way. Now, Nexpo's video staying up after having like 3.6 million views about it kind of kills the fun there. But the idea of it being a I mean, super isn't this just like the Patriot Act brings in kind information of stuff? about everyone who seemingly just works normal jobs is still present. Diseases worship is exactly what it says. There are certain groups of society throughout history who have quite literally worshipped diseases. Examples of that would be gods like Sipano from older cultures that was quite literally the god of smallpox. So tie in what I said about the Black Plague earlier and put together this anti-
entire idea that if these great diseases that wiped out large portions of humanity were either extraterrestrial or supernatural in some way, then it would make sense for people to worship it, which would mean, in the historical context, they have the same energy of that as a sort of pagan god. And depending on how you feel about pagan gods or the ideas of lesser gods existing in the world, then it may stand to reason that diseases themselves are sort of expressions or at least punishments from these beings. Because several diseases seem to come out of nowhere, and why we believe that to be mutation, the theory is saying that it is in fact a divine, or I guess you could say anti-divine, whatever the correct word is for like other gods, I don't know. It's supernatural, honky, wonky stuff. Animal-plant hybrids relates to the overall idea of convergent evolution. Essentially, there have been modern microbes found that contain both plant and animal cells, leaving them as sort of like a perfect middle on what we understand as the biological trees. And if things can be observed in the modern times heading that direction, then potentially a way, way long time back, things from one tree jumped over to the other. Or the idea that Man, just imagine if humans had like some of the traits of like uh, plants, like photosynthesis would be amazing. You just go outside, sit in the sun for like an hour and you'd be full for the day. That'd be amazing. All of biology itself is slowly going towards that perfect middle or perfect creature. Also, there were a bunch of like old middle aged legends of like trees that like just made babies or like these bushes and cabbages that made like goats and stuff so that's related i guess sky snag theory is saying that ufos are the pure result of a chemical reaction in the air essentially whenever two conflicting air waves hit each other at great speeds or they're sort of a crosswind the friction that's produced between them along with the trace particles in them starts to form essentially a snowball that keeps expanding that sort of aluminum sphere that's created seems to be a ufo to us but is actually an accumulation of whatever trace metals or other particles are floating around in the sky this is saying not only are ufos just objects in the air but can also be induced by government so if they want to encourage a ufo sighting in some place all you got to do is release a bunch of trace elements into the air make the air streams go together which we've well established at this point in the iceberg the government controls the weather and then boom you've got a ufo that would also explain the perfect shape because the sphere is created because they're like perfectly adding the atoms wherever they seem fit and that's why it's a circle also every single video describing this or like animation describing it is really creepy and unsettling and i'll let you find that for yourself I, that is your homework have fun with that Veltislayer, which stands for world of ice or world in ice something like that is also known as glacial cosmogony it was an idea brought forward by hans horvinger Herbinger, Herbinger, whatever, in the early 19th century as an idea of the existence of humanity. The story is really long, but short version is one night he was looking at the moon and realized that the iridescence of it is exactly that of ice. And then after having a dream in which he was shown the cosmos and how ice broke apart and formed everything as we know it, he came to the idea that the base root of everything in the known universe was ice. Essentially, the theory says that trace amounts of hydrogen went through the air and then they froze in the depths of space and created ice and then those were broken apart and that's what led to modern life. And water and life and oxygen and everything like that comes from melted or different versions of ice itself. This also relates to really old world ideas that on every side of the earth were essentially these giant ice walls, which is actually a theory that's still put forward by some flat earth believers that around every corner of the earth are these giant walls of ice that hold in the barriers of what we know, or essentially the reason the world may be expanding is because it's melting outwards. Also several old stories like a Norse mythology talked about giants beyond the ice wall. That's not related to this. I just had to mention that. And also these ideas of the Veltus of course. Bear, led to a lot of the German research that happened in World War II into theories like the occult and all of that, so that's something. Cosmic Censorship Cottage, I'm convinced, is a typo. And I know that nothing else on here has been a typo, and that doesn't make sense, but you also got to realize this iceberg was made by one person, and you also got to realize I spent like a day searching everywhere on the internet, all of my resources for where cosmic censorship cottage goes together and it's nowhere 
However, there is a very known thing called the cosmic censorship conjecture, which I'm gonna retcon here and say that's what he meant. Because cottage for one doesn't make sense here. There's a term that would fit on this iceberg that has a very closely related word or at least spelling related there. And I have no idea how cottage could tie into this at all. So it's conjecture now, just saying that now. The cosmic censorship conjecture is an idea that relates to things like black holes. So in the realm of physics, there are several things that we get to known as singularities. These are points mm -hmm. where either gravity reaches an infinite point or mass reaches an infinite point or whatever. The reason black holes are a big example of that is because gravity goes to such a point that mass's weight goes to a near infinite. So every time that we get to one of these singularities, something really weird happens. So that's where the idea of like E equals MC square and other ideas that Einstein came up with come from. The idea Idea that if you reach a theoretical infinite in energy you can do really wonky things like travel through time or I should say a near infinite speed but whatever same thing basically it's like there's these hard walls with our understanding or what we can do in physics that we just can't seem to break things like starting a black hole despite our lack of trying with things like the Hedron Collider or breaking the speed of light however anytime that that happens in our known world, anytime that something breaks those rules of physics, there's like a weird veil put over it. Like a black hole, right? The reason it's called a black hole is because it carries such weight that light itself cannot escape the pool, which is a really mm -hmm. wild concept to think about, but that doesn't mean nothing's going on there. It doesn't mean it's an empty space. It's just that from our rules of observation, whenever something gets to such a wild point in physics, it's impossible for us to view it. The same with something traveling faster than the speed of light. If something were to do that, we would have no way of seeing that or processing what it's doing. It would simply occur. The cosmic censorship conjecture is that anytime something is allowed to break our rules, we're not allowed to watch it now if you want to get into the idea that that's god that we're in a simulation and those are like the parameters set by the cpu we're in or whatever other theories you have it's saying that whenever something does something that we ourselves can't we're not allowed to look at it this has led some to theorize that maybe if we could see into a black hole we would see the supernatural or the afterlife or some other really out there concept that we can't really understand because there's no specific rules that just because mass gets so heavy we no longer can see it it's again just like a sort of veil draped over our heads so all of these gaps in our understanding of how the world works may not be accidental but purposefully put there by someone or something tier nine is called man oh my gosh okay that's the end Woo, we got through it i don't know how long this video is going to be but it'll probably be pretty long we only have uh, about two hours left of this, which is not too much. That could be, what, like two, uh, four more videos, which isn't too bad. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.